what would be, okay, your top favorite argument that supports the doctrine of the rapture? What, what was the first, uh, your top thing that you would, one of the, the top points you would make in trying to convince somebody that the rapture is true? I, I, that would be a, that would be a tough one. I mean, because where do you, where do you start on something like that? Yeah. I, I wouldn't know. What about you, brother? I have two. Um, well, I guess first it would be first Corinthians 15. Sure. You go there. Well, cause he st- says, behold, I show you a mystery. mystery. Amen. <laughs> we should not all sleep. Uh, so change. yeah. First Corinthians 15, 51. Well, that, that's a verse. I mean, that, that's good. Yeah, yeah. I like to use verses. For sure, yep. Yep. Um, that's yeah. one thing you've learned. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, because look, I mean, the argument is, well, you got people disappearing in the gospels and the Olivet discourse, you got people disappearing. Uh, and then there's talk of clouds and this and that. So clearly he's talking about the same thing that Paul's talking about, except for the fact that Paul is saying here that he is, look, I'm revealing to you a secret, a secret, right? We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, just recently, or or I guess it was a little while ago, it was a conversation with a guy that doesn't believe what he believes is going to happen. The Lord's going to call us up. We'll meet him in the air, and then immediately we'll come back down with him to be on the earth uh, during the yeah, tribulation. That's, yeah, exactly. That was always my question. So wait a minute. We're going to meet him in the air and then come right back down to the earth? That. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to come what's back? What's the point of going up in the air if we're just going to come back down to the earth? Yeah, and what's going to be going on during that period of time? Exactly. I mean, that's something that we've been delivered from. So. Yeah. So, Pastor Hal, what would you say to someone about Joel's question? Well, again, if the person has um, a biblical background, they understand some things from scripture, as Joel pointed out, the first place you start with anyone is with the, with the gospel. If a person understands the issue of the gospel, the truth of the gospel, the person of the gospel, they place their trust in the gospel and in the Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father, then they are in, in Christ and right. their security is sure. Amen. If you want to frame it from that particular point of view, it doesn't make any difference whether there's a rapture or not, because that's there's right. nothing in any events that's going to change that relationship in Christ. Right. But needless to say, uh, we begin to study the details of Scripture. We want to, we want to know how God's going to work things out, and and where does this rapture thing come from? Well, we know that the the day of wrath is, is a subject of prophecy. It goes all the way back. When John the Baptist comes comes onto the scene, he begins to preach to the nation of Israel. And he says, you, you guys need to, to flee from the wrath to come. Now, when he was saying that, was he saying that there was a chance that Israel as a nation was going to escape God's wrath, the 70th week of Daniel, when God pours out his, no. The, the difference would be is they would be going into the tribulation as as God's children with divine protection or they're exactly. going in as the object of God's wrath. Exactly. So he said, you don't want to be the, the object of God's wrath. You want That's to wait right. for the wrath to come. That's and right. So, yes, all of that is prophetical. And <laughs> it relates to the rapture because the, the event of the rapture, what we call the rapture, abuts the beginning of that day. See, most yep. people and Christians, they don't understand that we live in a unprophesied time, a day that God is dispensing grace and that at some time in the future, prophecy is going to resume. The timetable that is associated with that prophecy is going to resume. And the next thing on the timetable <laughs> is the day of wrath. And so people say, well, wh- why, do you, why do you think that you're not going to experience the day of wrath? Because my apostle tells me that I'm not going to. Exactly. Good. You know, when I read you're 1 Thessalonians the chapter 1, it says, you know, to wait for his son from, from heaven, from uh, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, who hath delivered us from the wrath to come. Exactly. And, and so in chapter 4, 
and chapter five. He says, we're not appointed to wrath. That was the whole point of the uh, catching up in chapter four is it results in the fact of escaping. Uh, it says for those that are lost, they shall not escape. But it says that we're not appointed. That means we will escape. That's so right. There, it's obviously something Paul is, 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 is he tinkering with the timeline of prophecy? Absolutely. That's what the part of the, what the mystery is about. It, that it, he says it was a secret. That's right. And so what is that secret about? Uh, the secret certainly isn't about the day of wrath because that's been the subject of prophecy. Yeah, that, the secret's yeah, not about the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ because that's been prophesied since, since the beginning. Amen. Uh, the, the mystery is about how it affects us who live now in this period that is the day of grace. Yes. Amen. I love that. Yeah. You know, well, that's you like, it. That's all you got. Yeah. I mean, come on, man. Yeah, I thought we were going to get a message. <laughs> I ran out of breath. <laughs> and then you think I went long, you know, I'm telling you, you know, I thought that was fantastic. Yeah, that was I good, love that, Pastor. You Thank like you very First much. Corinthians 15, you know, when you think of great passages, first and how it was all over it, First Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18, you know, we that believe in Jesus, you know, you know, he's going to catch us away and yeah. take us to heaven to be with him. And we believe meet the Lord in the air and we'll forever be with the Lord. Right. There. One other, uh, one other argument I have always loved. And this people, you still got people going, no, no, no. You got, you got you, in the gospels and the Olivet discourse, you've got people disappoint, disappearing, just, which is the same thing that Paul's talking about here. And, um, I like to think of, um, Luke 17, uh, when he says, uh, you know, like in verse 34, I tell you in that night, there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken and the other left. And they say, see, that's the rapture. That's what's going on there. Mm -hmm. Except, nope. except you've got to consider the context there. Remember, uh, consider what he said just prior to that in verse 32. What does he tell him? Remember Lot's wife. Mm -hmm. Who disappeared in that story? Yeah. The believer or the unbeliever, the unbeliever, she turned back and looked at Sodom and Gomorrah, probably an unbelief, probably because she wanted to go back and live there. And God, she disappeared. God turned her into a pillar of salt right she in that moment. Gone. She was a goner. <laughs> she was a salt lick for a cow after that. I mean, <laughs> that's the context too people disappearing well then what does that mean in the greater context of the tribulation he's talking about the great heart i would suggest the great harvest in revelation 14 the it, it has now come time for the lord to for his second coming and they are now scooping up everybody who ever worshiped the beast took the mark they're scooping them all up taking those bodies plopping them down in megiddo and uh, they there they shall face the Lord's wrath at his second coming. That's the disappearing that they're talking about. The ones who worship the beast and took the mark. Those people are goners. They're goners. So they're going to so the angels are going to collect them and put them in Armageddon and they're going to face judgment and wrath and they're going to die as soon as he comes down. And I like it when it says, as in the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the son of man be. You know, yes. As in the days of Noah, what happened? I mean, who 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 departed and who stayed? That's who, right. who died and who didn't? Yeah, well, said the flood came and took them all away. That's right. That's right. 